Islam, uh, uh, about the nature of Muhammad, about whether or not he existed even, whether the Quran was created by him or was created by God, whether he invented it. These things actually Islamic societies tended to, and Muslims even today, feel very brutal about. The fact is, and all singing... Do you want me to, you want me to, you want me to name you scholars? Just, yeah, just, I, I, I just let Douglas just finish, please. Yes, and, I could, yeah. and I could name them back, and, and many have suffered uh, for raising these questions when they have. The fact is, that, that we can put it this way, and all singing, all dancing, Mormon musical is a threat to nobody. Nobody thinks... Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we'll be checking out another video from Douglas Murray titled Douglas Murray dismantles Muslim apologies about the Quran. Wow. I believe this is going to be interesting. Let's check it out. Go. Douglas Murray has never been one to shy away from telling the truth as it is. In this video, Douglas Murray takes on a panel of Muslim scholars and speaks what is on everyone's mind, but what most people are afraid to say. Douglas Murray did not hold back. I want to start with you, uh, Mohammed. Uh, Muslims have chosen, in a way, to make a very big deal out of a pretty rubbish film. And, and it has been an overreaction, hasn't it? There's no doubt it's a rubbish film, but this isn't film 2012. We're not here to critique the artistic quality of the film. What most people, and people I speak to on Twitter, people I speak to in the street and at meetings, one of the things they're very clear about is that they don't understand the context of the uh, hate, of the pain, of the suffering that Muslims feel in response. Now, Muslims should never go beyond the, the, the limits and the boundaries of Islam in terms of peaceful protest and uh, have it used well, in they've done it, haven't they? Well, some, ha some have done it, and I think the question we should be asking is some, not all. Yeah. Many, I've, I've seen the film. Um, it was not very funny. It was pretty disgusting. It was awful in some places. Um, and the, we do have a right to freedom of expression in this country. However, even the European Convention on Human Rights in Article 10.2 sets limits on that freedom of expression and it needs to be used responsibly and it needs to be used in a measured sense. I mean, Douglas Murray, what's interesting is you know, it said that perhaps in the West we've lost any understanding of the, the depth of offence that things like this cause to Muslims and is that a problem of our own making? I think that's way? true in a way. I just, quickly, I mean, the thing of saying Muslims, uh, of course, in this is that in most countries, it's a very small minority of people. I mean, and also we should bear in mind that a lot of political people are using this for their benefit. In Australia, the riots would seem to be led by, you know, organizations like Hizbut Tahir. In Britain, the very small number of protesters who came out seem to have been affiliated with groups like the now banned Al Mujahirun and so on. So let's not think this is, as it were, Muslims as a bloc mm -hmm. taking offense. But there is a correct perception, I think, that, uh, that Islam as a religion is more brittle and feels these things more woundedly than other religions. And there is a reason for that. I mean, in a couple of weeks' time in London, uh, the musical by the creators of South Park, uh, 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 Mormonism the Musical, will begin. It's been going on on Broadway for some years and to pack out sense. crowds, including Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State, who said she was so offended by this film on the internet. So one of the things about this is that most religions by now have realized that being satirized, being critiqued, being even ridiculed and criticized, let's face it, just criticized or, or, or looked at in a historical manner as happened a few weeks ago with a film by Tom Holland on Channel 4. Even these things are felt very woundedly and that's because all other religions apart from Islam have been through this period of criticism and have, as it were, come out to some extent, not completely at the other end. Islam has not been used to this process historically. It is not used to the idea that your deepest feelings can be trodden upon and that that is a right that, not, that people who do not share your faith Douglas, have. Douglas, what on earth what? are you talking and about? Because how can Islam, which is a faith, it's a religion, it's an ideology, it's a way of life, you cannot talk about Islam in these broad, sweeping generalizations. Well, you talked about Muslims Islam, in quite Islam, a Islam doesn't position. feel things. Individual yeah. Muslims do. People who are mothers yes. and fathers. Can I get Ajman? If, if I could just get, go very, ahead, very Douglas, quickly uh, respond to that. Because it, it is a very important point. There are lots of different strands of Islam, but uh, in, in every Islamic society and uh, in the world today and historically. Do you mean Muslim majority countries? countries? No, 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 no. no, no, no. Islamic societies. Said it's societies that have Islam within the rule of law, countries like Pakistan where Islam is a very important part of the constitution and of the governance of the country. These places all put a particular emphasis on the fact that the ridiculing of the prophet Muhammad or, 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 or all sorts of claims about him asking whether he existed and so on is blasphemy and that yeah. blasphemy should be punished. Douglas Murray has poignantly highlighted a critical issue regarding the violent reactions by some Muslims to criticisms and ridicule of Islam, particularly towards the Prophet Muhammad. In many Islamic countries, 
Such actions are considered crimes and are met with severe punishments. This is a stark contrast to the principles of free speech in Western societies like Britain, where all ideas, including religious beliefs, are open to criticism and even ridicule. In a free society, the ability to criticize, debate, and discuss all ideas openly is fundamental. This includes religion. The transition for some Muslims from environments where blasphemy is a punishable offense to societies where such actions are protected under free speech can be jarring. However, this is a necessary adaptation to the norms of a free society. Violence as a response to speech, no matter how offensive it may seem, is unacceptable and undermines the very foundations of a democratic and free society. The Pew Research Center reports that in many predominantly Muslim countries, the majority of the population supports making Sharia the law of the land. Under Sharia law, blasphemy and apostasy can be met with severe punishments, including death. This cultural and legal backdrop significantly influences the mindset of many Muslims, making the adaptation to Western norms of free speech challenging. Furthermore, the Economist Intelligence Unit's Democracy Index consistently ranks countries with strong protections for freedom of speech such as Norway and Iceland, among the highest in terms of overall democratic quality. Conversely, countries with strict blasphemy laws, like Saudi Arabia and Iran, often rank lower. This correlation highlights the importance of protecting free speech as a measure of a healthy democracy. The violent reactions to criticism of Islam not only undermine the principles of free speech, but also perpetuate a cycle of fear and self-censorship. This is detrimental to societal progress and cohesion, it's imperative for immigrants to understand and adapt to the values of their new homes, which includes respecting the right to free speech. I've got simply three points to make on this particular discussion. I think there's one correction for uh, Douglas's uh, uh, information. Islam has been through uh, 1,400 years of critique, mm. discussions and debates internally and externally. And it has gone through it without a problem, and it will go through it without any issue. I have no issue with that. I think there is an element of truth in what we are saying here to do with Muslims' disproportionate response. The reasons these responses are particularly prominent in countries like Pakistan, Yemen, in Bangladesh has more to do with politics than religion. Let me take, give you an example. Very briefly. Most of these countries are ruled by dictators and despots, illegitimate governments, corruption is rampant, poverty is acute, no opportunities for people to make a better future for themselves tomorrow. And don't forget, the drones attack that has dominated Yemen and Pakistan has also exasperated frustration. So what we are now seeing is a political response using this as a pretext. As an excuse. But, well, let, let, but Prophet Muhammad, let me put it clearly, yeah. Prophet Muhammad doesn't need our defence. Okay. And God doesn't need our defence. All right. What let's we need to do is defend that. ourselves. Um, okay. I, I, absolutely. The, the, the second point you make, I think, is, is, is perfectly valid. The first, uh, I think, is not. Uh, for this reason, you say that Islam has been through this, this process for 1400 years. <coughs> it, it, a part of that is true. There has been debate within Islam, but on the fundamentals of Islam. Uh, uh, about the nature of Muhammad, about whether or not he existed even, whether the Quran was created by him or was created by God, whether he invented it. These things actually Islamic society has tended to, and Muslims even today, feel very brutal about. The fact is, and to, all singing... Do you want me to, do you me to all name your scholars? Just, 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 I, I could, just I, 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 I was, I, I could ask those Let's questions. Let's just finish, yes, and, I yeah. could, and I could name them back, and, and many have suffered uh, for raising these questions when they have. The fact is, that, that we can put it this way, an all singing, all dancing Mormon musical is a threat to nobody. nobody Nobody thinks that Mormon mobs are going to go and kill anybody or threaten to. But yeah. there is a risk, and it is a okay. legitimate risk in the world today, that an all-singing, all-dancing Mohammed musical in the West End might not but go you know, off. So Douglas Murray makes a compelling point about the role of fear and terror in Islam. This fear is often institutionalized through blasphemy and apostasy laws, which impose severe punishments for those who criticize or leave the religion. This creates a significant conflict when these values are juxtaposed with the principles of free speech and open debate that are foundational in Western societies. In many Islamic countries, the penalties for blasphemy and apostasy can be as severe as imprisonment or even death. For example, in countries like Pakistan and Saudi Arabia, accusations of blasphemy can lead to the death penalty. This creates an environment where fear suppresses dissent and criticism, effectively silencing any opposition or calls for reform within the religion. This culture of fear and suppression poses a serious challenge when Muslim communities live in Western countries where freedom of speech is a fundamental right. The clash between these two sets of values often leads to tension and, in some cases, violence. 
The West's commitment to free speech means that all ideas, including religious beliefs, must be open to scrutiny and debate. This is a non-negotiable aspect of living in a democratic society. Islam, like all religions, has the potential to reform and adapt to new cultural and social contexts. However, as Douglas Murray points out, attempts at reform within Islam have historically faced significant challenges. Reformers often face severe backlash, threats, and violence, making the path to change fraught with danger. For instance, prominent reformers like Salman Rushdie, Ayan Hirsi Ali, and others have faced death threats and attacks for their criticisms of Islam and calls for reform. The difficulty of reforming Islam is further highlighted by the fact that many Muslim-majority countries are governed by laws derived from Sharia, which are resistant to change. A significant portion of Muslims in countries like Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Egypt support making Sharia the official law of the land. This widespread support for traditional interpretations of Islamic law makes reform efforts particularly challenging. Despite these challenges, the need for reform within Islam remains critical especially in the context of integrating Muslim communities into Western societies. It is essential to foster an environment where open debate and criticism are not only tolerated, but encouraged. This is the only way to reconcile the principles of free speech with the deeply held beliefs of any community. Wow, what an interesting debate. We can all tell this was really, really very heated. And based on the point, and the fact that Graz Murray have stated in this video that you have no right not to be offended when you are in a society. And you don't have to resort to violence because someone said something against you, against your religion, or against the founder of your religion. You don't have to resort to violence. There are better ways of addressing such issues. So if someone says something you are not okay with, you can engage in a dialogue with the person to get an understanding rather than, you know, resorting to violence. And Douglas Murray have stated this fact that this happens because a lot of the immigrants that are Muslim, the countries in which they are from, Sharia law is in place, whereby when you say something or when you try to critique uh, Islam or you try to uh, say something against the founder of Islam in those Muslim countries they are from, in most cases, it's either you are in prison or you, you, you is punishable by death. So because of that, when they find themselves uh, in a country or in a society whereby the value system, the culture and the tradition of that country differs from the culture and the value system from the country in which they are from, they tend to not be able to integrate with the country's culture because they have been used to the system whereby when, whereby when someone says something against uh, your religion or when someone says something against the founder of your religion, uh, there are some specific punishment for those things. So I believe... You come into a country, the first thing you have to do is that you have to adjust yourself to be able to accommodate uh, the country's culture, to, uh, to be able to accommodate the country's tradition, to be able to accommodate the country value system. And I believe all countries have their own uh, identity. Just as we know, British identity is embodied uh, in their culture, is embodied in their tradition, is embodied in their value system. So you coming to uh, live in UK, coming to live in Europe, the first thing you have to do is to be able to adjust yourself to accept the people culture, the people tradition, the people's value system. And you don't have to resort to violence just because someone is trying to uh, express his freedom of speech. There are better ways of addressing such issues. And if someone says something that you feel offended uh, by what the person say, you can engage in a dialogue with the person in order to be able to get an understanding on what the person say instead of you threatening the person's life or trying to arm the person or resorting to violence just because the person is trying to, uh, trying to express his freedom. And I believe this is one of uh, the points Douglas Murray always talk about on Islamist fundamentalists and Islamist extremism, that 
they tend to be easily offended when someone says something against their belief or against the founder of their religion. And you don't have the right not to be offended in a society whereby there are two or three or four or ten people. There is no way that someone will say something to offend you. But there is no reason for you to resort to violence just because someone says something and you feel offended by what the person says. There are better ways of addressing such issues. I believe that is a point uh, Douglas Murray is trying to make us understand in this, in this video. Majority of uh, the, the Muslims are very peaceful, but nevertheless, there are also very few people uh, in the Muslim that are also very radical, that are also very violent. And the point the Islam scholar gave is that a lot of countries uh, try to, you know, use Islam to justify their action, which is not true. So the problem is not from the religion, but the problem is actually from the people who try to use Islam to justify their own action. And I've really learned a lot just listening to Douglas Murray and also listening to the uh, Muslim scholar. And I believe you also do. So keep the comments coming. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.